Alright, welcome to Precalculus 11. This is the first lesson on sequences. Hopefully, this will be a little bit better than your high school teacher explaining it to you. And you can pause, rewind, watch the video over and over again. So let's start. A sequence is a list of numbers that follow some sort of pattern. So this is your very basic concept. An example would be 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to infinity. It goes up by 1, so you see a plus 1 pattern from term to term. Or you might have something that's 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, where each term doubles the previous term. So 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. And you can also have things that are a little bit more complicated. So you can have something like 1, then 1 half, then 1 fourth, 1 eighth, where in each case you are dividing by 2. So 1 divided by 2 is a half. 1 half divided by 2 is a fourth. And you can keep going on until you get to 0. I should mention that these dot dot dots at the end of each line just means it continues on until some infinite term. So the sequence will never stop. Now, we're going to talk about a specific type of sequence, an arithmetic sequence, and these are sequences where the next term is always generated based on either a subtraction or addition. So in this case, we have 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 plus 2 is 7, 7 plus, well, I made a little mistake here, it should be 9, so 7 plus 2 is 9, and this just goes on forever and ever. In fact, another sequence we have here that is based on addition or subtraction might be 3, 1, negative 1, negative 3, so on, where instead of adding 2, we simply subtract 2. And yes, these numbers can be negative, that's okay. And we can also do this with, say, decimal points. So we can have 2, 1.3, 0 0.6, negative 0 0.1, where each time we're just subtracting 0 0.0 or 0.7. So some of these can look challenging, but to determine if a series is an arithmetic series, you just take the difference between two numbers, and you pick two other numbers in the sequence and find the difference, and if they're the same, then it's probably an arithmetic sequence. So let's say we have a sequence that looks like 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, and it seems to be going up by 5 every single time, and we're asked to determine the 20th term. Now, how do we do that? Well, first of all, each one of these numbers is a term. So 0 is the first term, which we denote as a t with a 1 underneath. The 5 is our second term, so we write t with a 2 underneath. This is called t sub 2 or t2. And we can follow along and say that this 20th is going to be t sub 5. And we want to know what this number over here is, t sub 20. We don't know what it is, but we're asked to determine it. So we can kind of use our reasoning skills here. We can say, well, the first term starts at 0. And then every term after that is some multiple of 5. So it's 5 times some number x. And if we take a look t2, so if we take a look at t2 here, t2 is equal to 0 plus 5 times 1, and then we get 5. t3 here, which is equal to 10, is 0 plus 5 times 2. So we see a relationship here between our term, 3, and the amount of times we multiply by 5. So we can guess that if we hold this relationship to be the same, t20 is going to be 0 plus 5 times 19. Because we can see that the number we're multiplying here is exactly one less than the number we have beside our t. So our third term is 0 plus 5 times 2. So this means that our 20th term is going to be 0 plus 5 times 19. So we have a 20 minus 1 here. So we can guess 
that our 20th term is going to be 95. In fact, you'll see, because if you think of it like this, the fifth term, t5 here, we say 20, is really just 5 times 5 minus 5. So this is 25 minus 5. So there's another way of looking at this. So therefore, the 20th term, if we take a look at this, we should have 20 times 5 minus 5, which is going to be 100 minus 5, which is just 95. And we see that we get this answer regardless of the way we use our intuition here. So here's something a little bit more complicated. Now let's determine the 101st term. Well, we kind of had an intuition about our formula here. So we know that t100 is going to be 0 plus 5 times 99. Or sorry, this is the 101st term. So let's do t101, 5 times 100, which is equal to 500. And if you did write all 101 terms out, you would find that yes, this is the case. But why does this work? Why does this relationship between this 101 here and this 100 hold? Well, we have a formula for this. To find the nth term in a series, we take our initial value, and then what we do is we add the difference times the term we're looking for minus 1. So why does this work? So in the previous example, we had the number 0, 5, 10, and so forth. So this was our first term, 0. And then we have here is t3, which is equal to 10. But we have a difference of 5. So if we write this out here, we have t of n is equal to 0 plus 5 times n minus 1. Now why is it n minus 1? Well, this n minus 1 is really just the amount of times we move over one term. So when we take a look at t3, we have the first term plus 5 times the amount of times we moved over to get to the third term, because we start at t1, and then we hop over one time, hop over two times, so now we're at t3, and we did that twice. So we get 0 plus 5 times 2, which is 10, and we end up at 10 for our third term. So this is kind of an intuitive approach. So let's say you started, I don't know, we have 3, 7, 11, 14, 17, 20. I'll write out a few terms. We want to start at 3, which is our first term, and then we want to get over to the fifth term. Well, this just means we start at 3, and then we add 4, add 4 again, add 4 one more time, and a last time, so we add 4 four times, which just happens to be the difference times the amount of jumps we did. So we did 4 jumps, and the difference is 4 each time. And this will get us the fifth term. So when you have a formula here to find the nth term, you take the initial value, and then you add the difference times the amount of jumps you're doing to get to that nth term, which happens to be n minus 1 jumps. So let's take a look at a problem here. We have the nth term formula is a plus n minus 1 times d, and we have a series 24, 41, 58. So let's practice here. What is our a value? Our a is the initial value. If I can spell, it will be our initial value. Some people might write this as t1 instead of a. It's the same thing. So our initial value is always going to be the first one. So our a is 24. Now what is the d? This is the difference between any two terms. So to find this, we can take the second term, 41, and just subtract 24, and we'll see this is 17. So, how do we find term 7? We take our a, 
which is 24, and then we add n minus 1, so what is n? n is going to be this value here, 7. So we take 7 minus 1, and then we multiply this by the difference, and the difference here is 17. So term 7 is equal to 24 plus 6 times 17, which is the same as 24 plus 102, which is equal to 126. So if we write out our sequence and continue adding 17 each time, we see we have 75, 91, then we have 108, sorry, this should be 92, and 109. Then when we add 17 again, we get 126. This is our T1, T2, this is our T4, and we find that 126 is our seventh term. So we have some sort of nice examples that prove that this works. Let's do a couple other ones here. Let's find the tenth term of negative 3, 1, 5, 9. So first we find our a, which is negative 3. Then we find our difference. Well, let's take two random ter well, two side-by-side -side terms and subtract them and see what we get. So here we have 5 minus 1, which is equal to 4. So our difference is 4. Then with the formula, our tenth term is equal to the starting number plus the difference times the amount of jumps we're doing, which will be 10 minus 1 jumps. So this will be negative 3 plus 4 times 9, which will be negative 3 plus 36, meaning that the tenth term will be 33. What about negative 12, negative 10, negative 8, and we're asked to find the twelfth term? Well, we'll do the same thing. We know a is going to be negative 12, because this is our first term. The difference, well, we don't have to subtract necessarily in this case. We can see that to get from negative 12 to negative 10, we just add 2. And then from negative 10 to negative 8, we add 2. So the difference is going to be 2. So t12 is the first term plus the difference times n minus 1, which will be 12 minus 1. So this will be negative 12 plus 2 times 11, which is negative 12 plus 22, which is just equal to 10. So our 12th term will be 10. So this is some basic stuff to find the certain term that you're looking for if you're already given a sequence. Now, suppose you're not asked for any specific term. You just want a formula that can get you some term. And you want it to be true for any term. So what we do here is we just unpack our formula, a plus d times n minus 1. We just plug some numbers in and we expand it. So with this sequence, 1, 3, 5, 7, we know our a is equal to 1, and our difference, well, we go up by 2, so we just plug a and d into our equation here for a plus d times n minus 1. So what we end up is, we end up with 1 plus 2 times n minus 1. And if we do some algebra and expand these things, we get 1 plus of course, we distribute the 2, so we have 2n minus 2. So now when we collect our like terms, we have 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. And then we have plus 2n. So this is the formula to find the nth term in the sequence. And we can check by finding a term we already know. So t3, we know is going to be 5, so let's just make sure this works. In fact, this is a great way to check to see if you got it right. So t3 is going to be negative 1 plus 2 times 3. And again, we just plug this 3 into this n right here to check. 
So this will be negative 1 plus 6, and this will equal 5. So we found that this formula works. You can check a couple more terms if you want, but if you get just one of the terms right, you probably have the formula right. So to find the general term, or the formula, these words will be interchanged for the nth term, then you just take your formula, a plus d times n minus 1, and you just plug in a, you plug in d, and you solve for the nth term. And of course, it should be mentioned that this formula right here, negative 1 plus 2n, will change depending on the sequence you're given. There is another type of problem you can have here, where instead of finding the general term or given a sequence, we're just given a general term and we have to find some specific term. Now, this really isn't that bad because we already have the formula for this term. So what we see here is we see that n has been replaced by 6. So let's just plug 6 into this n and 6 into this n and we have that t6 is equal to 3 plus 4. Then we plug our 6 into the n here. So we get times 6, which is 3 plus 24, which is equal to 27. So here's the question, what does this sequence look like? Well, we know that the sixth term is 27, so we have some spaces here, that's the fifth, the fourth, the third, the second, and the first, but what else do we know? Well, we could plug some other values in for our term here. So why don't we do that? Why don't we plug in, say, let's find the first term. So t1, this is going to be equal to 3 plus 4 times 1. Of course, we just plug the 1 into the n here in our formula. So we get 3 plus 4, which is equal to 7. So our first term here is going to be 7. Now, do we have to calculate every single term here? And the answer is no, because we can see here that each term is going to have a difference of 4. So this 3 plus 4n, which I'll write down here because it's getting a little bit messy up there. When we take a look at the number 4n here, we see that each term is a difference of 4, which means it adds 4. So we can guess that the pattern here is going to be 7, 11, 15, 19, 23, and look at that. When we add 4, we get to 27, so we must be right because the pattern holds from the first term to the sixth term. So that's doing stuff with general terms. Uh, this is going to be the end of this video. We're going to see some more stuff like this in the next video, where instead of solving for a certain term, maybe we're going to solve for the difference between terms or the starting value, or perhaps even finding values in between two terms. So if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section of this video, and I will answer them as soon as I possibly can.